Earth is happening in the cybersecurity space. And just as important, what do we do with FireEye? F-E-Y-E, one of the leading cybersecurity companies with a stock that has been absolutely obliterated, down $6.66, or 23%, just today alone after reporting a not-so-hot quarter, and down nearly 60% from its June highs. Fire is a high-quality, machine-based cybersecurity platform that provides its clients with real-time protection against the most sophisticated types of cyber attacks. And they're also widely regarded as the best forensic specialists in the business, the company you call in after your business has been hacked in order to figure out what happened. But right now, it seems business is not good in the cyberspace, in part because there simply weren't enough high-profile hacks in the last quarter, and the Chinese seem to have taken a pause from their hacking ways. So when FireEye reported this morning, the company delivered a larger-than-expected earnings loss on weaker-than-anticipated sales, although they still grew at a 45% clip. But what really frightened investors here was the fact that management slashed their full-year sales, earnings, and billings guidance and gave a forecast for the fourth quarter that was well below what the analysts were looking for. Plus, the commentary in the conference call was not exactly encouraging. Company talking about a slowdown in the cybersecurity spending cycle. We're going to find out more about that. Now, on the one hand, this quarter was definitely suboptimal. But on the other hand, this stock has been annihilated. And at some point, it's got to represent decent value. So let's take a close look with Dave DeWalt, the chairman and CEO of FireEye, find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. DeWalt, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks for having me, Jim. Thanks for having me today. All right, Dave. I'm glad you came on because you did describe in uh, total, uh, let's say, honesty that there is a change in the way companies are spending a strategic shift in the way companies are spending on cybersecurity. I'm trying to figure out with that new strategic shift, how does fire I get to profitability? Yeah, Jim, glad you brought that up. I think it's a, it's a really good point. I think you got to look at the little journey that uh, FireEye has been on over the last eight or 12 quarters and, and take that from a macro point of view first. You know, this company's grown from a sub $50 million company to nearly a billion dollar company in, in less than 12 quarters. We were the beneficiary at times of a surge or a spike that's happening in cybersecurity. I mean, almost every day we read about headlines and breaches and things that were going on. And at first, when this came out, these news, you know, there was a there was a shock factor. There was an all factor. And that created a lot of emergency spending and, you know, sort of reactionary spending that occurred. And FireEye took advantage of that. We grew our company. We went from a point product to a platform. And, you know, I'm every bit of excited as I was back then to the future of FireEye because the market has cycles and you just alluded to one. You know, sometimes those cycles are, are up and to the right. Sometimes those cycles change a little bit. And oftentimes cybersecurity companies like us are, are, are tied to the cycles of the threat landscape. And with a lot of what we're seeing in the marketplace with China and the China peace treaties that we're seeing, you know, it's changing a little bit. But I would also point out we have threats from ISIL, threats from the Arabian Peninsula, Iran, Syria, North Korea with Sony. And so it keeps evolving. And I think uh, FireEye is really well positioned to take advantage of that over the long haul. And it's a, it's a short blip in the, in the grand scheme of things. Right, well, one of the things that, uh, that I did find disturbing is you had a big miss in billings in Europe. And, and I mean, Europe is just now beginning to get back on its feet. They're starting to spend. Uh, and, and this was contrary to a lot of what I'm seeing in Europe, which is that the companies are beginning to spend more on information technology. What's going on with, with Europe and FireEye? You know, I think, I think that's on us a little, Jim. You know, I think we've got to perform a little bit better. You know, I'd like to say it's all macro uh, across the globe. It's not. You know, FireEye, like any company, has to perform better, and we will. You know, we're fighters. And, you know, I think this, um, you know, this, this moment in time is a good chance for the company to, to rebound. Um, Europe is healthy enough for us to really grow, and we've got to be able to do that. I mean, sure, there's safe harbors and privacy issues and some occasional anti-Americanism that goes on post-Snowden. Yeah, there's currency fluctuations and things like that. But having said that, no excuse. We should be growing. We should be growing better. And we put a new management team in to do it. We're going to be coming out with some new products and offerings to really drive Europe in the future. And I'm optimistic we'll get there. Now, how about this uh, change in the average duration of contract? That also surprised me. Well, you know, that one's a little more episodic because a year ago we had a, a very large federal contract, an eight-figure deal that was a five-year contract. Uh, at the time we reported that a year ago, we had talked about a spike of four or five months of contract length. And we've really resulted back to a more normalcy of the, um, of the contract length once you take away that one-time event. Um, we are seeing some threat landscape change a bit, so we're being, you know, cautious a little bit to the length of contract, and that's usually where you see it, you know, the size of the deal, the length of the contract, and we want to make sure we, um, you know, we create some risk tolerance to our plan going forward, and, 
you know, continue to overachieve like we've been doing the last eight quarters since we've been here as a public company. So you think in this environment, let's say China does not go back to its old hacking ways. Let's say there are not any real high profile retail uh, hacks within the next year. Is there a way to get the profitability? I mean, look, you, you're a seasoned executive and you're, you've been in a lot of different companies. Is there a way to get the profitability or do you just say, you know what? We are a niche company, and we should find a buyer for 40, 40 bucks a share, a large company that really needs our expertise. A couple points there, Jim. Number one, you know, the threat landscape is still evolving, and it's as dangerous as it's ever been. You know, if China makes some adjustments to their policy, I mean, think back what's happened over the last couple of years. I mean, the Chinese military has been knocking down the front door of the Western world, almost in brazen a type of attacks. Sooner or later, that was going to change a little bit. But along the way comes North Korea and other countries and other crime groups. So it's a pretty dangerous environment. And I think that's why it's pretty bullish for us long term. And oh, by the way, we did have a billings miss uh, this quarter. And, you know, that's on us a bit. But I will tell you, we beat earnings per share or loss per share by seven pennies. Uh, we continue to um, be positive cash flow for the full year. Um, the bottom half of our income statement has been very strong. The operating leverage is strong. We have over a billion dollars in cash. So we put this company in a really good position for the long haul, and I think we've really got a great chance organically to grow and have shareholder value. And again, this is one or two data points in a long journey for the company, and I'm extremely proud of how much and how much distance we've come as a company and how much more we're going to do. Uh, this, uh, all day today we heard about Iranian, sh uh, Iranian hacks, but we didn't hear who, what, where. I mean, I, I, I thought we were like, trying to make peace with Iranians. And what are they suddenly? What are they, what are they trying to get at? Well, you know, you know, you have a growing superpower here, Jim, and you know, United States, China, Russia, and these superpowers are using the cyber domain to their advantages. And you know, at times there's a there's a political element and a PR element to all of this. I mean, China's made a, a peace treaty with the United States, a peace treaty with Russia, a peace treaty with the United Kingdom, peace treaty with Germany, all important trade partners to them. And ultimately, it's all part of the strategy, that I think, that they're deploying. When you look at Iran or Syria, they're all pieces of the global ge geopolitical uh, you know, chess game that's going on. So the threat landscape's not going to change dramatically. But you know, we are going to see shifts in it. And it's going to probably move a little more international, maybe the higher value targets, more government on government versus government on commercial. But we're going to still probably see it. And I would be really surprised if we don't continue to see some of the larger ones um, that we'd seen in the past, maybe outside of U.S. soil coming up. And, you know, I'm sure you saw Talk Talk, right. which was a pretty big um, situation in, in England. And so we're going to continue to see this. And, um, of course, FireEye is going to be there for that. And that's our mission in life. I know it's not your job to look at the shareholder base, but... I, I, I had a feeling today that this shareholder base turned out to be some of it was just kind of based on, well, there was a big hack at Home Depot. Uh, there's a hack at Target. Uh, there's going to be another hack and we're going to make money in FireEye. I mean, it, it was a very episodic shareholder base. Do you think that's that's now uh, out and the people in recognize that there's a different strategy and FireEye is going to be part of it, but it's no longer just you pick up the paper tomorrow and find out that the, that 285,000 people were hacked because they uh, went to uh, a particular retailer? You know, Jim, I, I, you know, my whole job here is to drive shareholder value. You know, this is my 16th okay. year as being a public company CEO, and uh, I recognize that first and foremost. And I'm going to do everything in my power to drive that shareholder value, whichever shareholder types they may be. Okay. And, you know, what I see is a long-term shareholder growth opportunity for this company, and I believe in that. Um, this is a long game. You know, we're going to witness cyber attacks in our lifetimes, our kids' lifetime. Cyber domain is really important. So, you know, yes, there's some, some changes and cycles and some hype that happens. But if you look at how important the cyber domain in is and how important FireEye is to that grand scheme of things, you know, I would bet on our company, and I am. And I believe in that. And over time, we're going we're gonna to show that. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. A tough day. Dave DeWalt, Chairman and CEO of FireEye. You're a good man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, these are expensive stocks. And when they don't deliver the right numbers, you see what happens. But if you believe in the cyberspace theory and that there are going to be a lot more hacks, then down here, you have to take a hard look at FireEye. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.